Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Snigrader. We are going to talk about Poly 6 key bed reconditioning in this uh, couple of videos, but realistically this applies to pretty much any key bed that uses a rubber dome. There's the rubber domes right there. So these are the rubber strips uh, with the little dome inside, as you can see. They look like this from the top, um, and the key presses down, and what does it do? It pushes this little black sort of bump pad, this little pad up, and uh, let me see if I can give you a better, better view of that. It pushes this little rubber pad up where it makes contact with a mating connector here. And as you can see, here's the mating connector. There is only one of these bump pads on a Poly 6 because the Poly 6 doesn't have velocity sensitivity. If the keyboard has the velocity sensitivity, there's actually two bump pads and two sets of contacts. And what happens is the speed uh, of the velocity of the key is measured actually from the time it takes the one to close and then the next to close. So that's how the, the key actually tells the brain of the synthesizer how fast you're punching it down is the, the time lag between those two switches closing. Anyway, uh, in the case of Poly 6, this is what we're dealing with. Now, uh, this is an interesting one because, as you know, anybody who's got an older synth, keys go intermittent. And um, sure, it can be just because dirt gets inside, and these guys normally go through these little tiny pinholes on the board, you see? And they're held in place like that. And sometimes dirt can get underneath and dust. But also, too, over repetitive playing and hammering and sledgehammering, the uh, conductive material inside the rubber dome can actually wear out or get a crack in it or so on and so forth. So how do we fix this? Uh, there are a couple of different techniques for doing so. Um, before I get too deeper into it, I just want to uh, point out that we actually have three Poly 6 key beds to work with here. So we're going to do a three-way cleanup shootout. And uh, what that basically means is this is key bed from Alpha. The Alpha Poly 6, as you remember, the Alpha is my best Poly 6. And this key bed, um, actually, it's actually the key bed from Beta. It doesn't matter. Beta had a better key bed than Alpha, as you may have noted in the previous ones. So this is the Beta key bed. It's already been taken apart, as you've seen in previous videos. All it involves doing is taking the key bed out, pushing the keys down, and unlocking them, putting the springs aside. Washing and cleaning the keys, which is a tedious process, but you know, um, how many times in this synth's life is it going to actually have its key bed rebuilt? This is probably the only chance you're ever going to get to clean those keys, so just do it. It's going to take you an hour and it won't be fun, like doing dishes, uh, a little bit grosser because the stuff that can build up on those keys is not fun to deal with, but it's worth it. So you get all those keys clean, and that's part of the equation. The next part is to remove this board, which we've documented in a previous video, and uh, once you get the clips clear and the board clear, you can actually go to town cleaning off this surface here, which will be corrupted with the growth of ages, as I like to call it. And as you can see, here's one that has not been taken apart yet, and yes, indeed, contaminated by the growth of ages, because in between the keys, crap can fall in, tequilas can be spilled, hair and other associated body cellular material drops in, and the whole thing starts to become pretty disgusting after a decade or three. So here we are. We're fortunate this uh, key bed does not have much corrosion and everything, and the keys, as I took them out, are in pretty good shape. Right now they're over in a tub soaking in hot water and soaking... Uh, solution, and I'm going to be spending my extra hour. I've already spent an hour cleaning these keys. I'm going to spend another hour cleaning these keys. And uh, key bed number three, uh, the third key bed, is the one from the um, <clears throat> gamma unit. Actually, I'm kind of getting this confused. Uh, the worst of all the key beds is the actual one that came with the alpha unit. Yeah, remember this one? I took this one apart outside. Um, I believe it's um, part 19, part 20 of the, the playlist, and this is the, the where there was a shattered key, where the key had taken a big hit. So this is in fact the key bed from the Alpha unit, and it's actually in the worst shape of the lot. And then, so once more a correction, um, this I believe is the Beta unit, and this one is from the Gamma unit, believe it or not. Um, so, at any rate, I've got these two key beds here in various states of disassembly. Uh, this one I already took apart, took the 
keys out and I have them in a bag. Those keys are actually in far worse shape because they have that horrible goo on the bottom of them. They look like they were melted with some caustic solution. I'll deal with those in a sec. Okay, so I'm totally off topic. I'm going to pull myself back on topic here. So thanks for bearing with me while I kind of sort of covered all the details. Uh, this key bed's going to come apart. We're going to take the domes out and we're going to look at them. But now that you know that we have three key beds that we're doing, I'm going to introduce to you the three ways that you can repair them. And we're going to do, I call this a shootout because it is. I'm going to use one technique for each of them and we're going to document it. And at the end of the day, uh, we're going to compare the results and we're also going to compare the costs and, and also the, the hassle factor. So, uh, this one here, and I guess Alpha Beta Gamma doesn't really qualify, we'll just call them Keybed 1, 2, and 3. Uh, Keybed 1 is the one that's going to be repaired. These domes are actually going to, all of them, be resurfaced with these. And this is the Synth Doctor's Synth, synth Doctrine, as he calls himself. Synth Doctrine. Bob Weigel, as uh, he sells these. And these are essentially a high-tech conductive material, as he claims is used by NASA. I believe him. It, I'm sure it is. And uh, this material here is pre-cut into discs of the appropriate dimension to simply... And they're self-adhesive on the back. So, um, And Bob actually had these commissioned. He had them made. Uh, and I basically got enough to do lots of keyboards. Well, lots, maybe, I don't know, three, I guess. Hard to say, really. Um, but I am going to, rather than selectively repair pads, I'm going to apply them to all of these. So uh, that process will be for keybed number one, the synth doctrine. And then we'll compute up the cost per pad um, based on how much I paid for the whole batch, and I'll do the math later. So that's what's going to happen to keybed number one. Keybed number two, on the other hand, is right here, and it's going to get the silver varnish treatment. And this is a silver conductive pen. It's essentially a um, it's essentially an acrylic-based uh, uh, ink, I suppose is what you'd call it, an acrylic-based solution with lots of silver flakes in it. And uh, had a little bit of a you know, online discussion through Skype uh, with Murray from Painting with Sound, and he's also, of course, the brains behind the Kiwi Technics company. Um, and basically, he feels that using the pen's not the best idea because you don't have any control over the density of silver flake that gets onto the pad. So we're going to open up this pen and see if there's a way we can actually pour a bit of the um, silver conductive out into a little... Uh, cap or something like that and then use a toothpick paintbrush something like that in order to be our applicator and this is going to be used to rebuild keybed number two's contact plates and keybed number three is a uh, uh, you know you want to call it a low budget solution but maybe even the best solution of all we don't know we'll find out um, this stuff quick grid rear window defogger repair and this is essentially an acrylic resin, and guess what? comes with an applicator brush, and it's also got silver in it. Now, it's also got kind of a copper coloring in order to match the... Uh, this is when you, the, the grid on the back of your car or your truck gets uh, scraped and stops conducting heat, the heating grid. This will patch that up. So, um, this stuff is uh, $12.95, uh, $13 at your hardware store. It's You can get it pretty easily. Uh, this guy, on the other hand, I had to go to an electronics supply place, and it was $32, so a lot more expensive, mind you. You get a lot more, as you can probably tell. Um, and then, of course, the Synth Doctrine ones, I spent $50, I think, for both of these strips. So, um, long and the short of it is, uh, what happens to Keybed 3 is going to be the cheapest solution, assuming that this can do the entire Keybed. And then we're going to just basically see how easy all of these are, and how difficult, and so on and so forth. So, uh, stay tuned with me. Uh, first up, we are going to proceed with this key bed here. We are going to clean these rubber contacts, and we are going to proceed with the Synth Doctrine uh, membrane contact pads. <laughs> 